Year 11. It was, it was up there, for sure. But I'm excited to be good with the guys we got. Um, and building a lot of camaraderie over the last few months. So it's been uh, finished. And so I'm definitely excited about what we got, what we've been building. Excited to get going tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I understand the benefits of it. You know, it's always a competitive world. Like we're competing with the NCAA, um, you know, I guess with NILs and everything like that. And making sure that the kids are getting what's best for them. You know, it's easier than. You know, see, especially at that age, you see a dollar amount kind of jump after. But you know, if you're around the best possible professionals, the best possible doctors, the best possible coaches that can prepare you for where you're ultimately trying to get to, I think you know, I support that. You know, the NBA is doing. But, uh, I think just as a young kid, understanding that it is a different ball game. It's not you know, you're skipping college, you're skipping a whole level of I guess experience in a way. You know, so you're kind of just throwing yourself in the fire. I'm never against guys who feel like they're prepared and ready. Like we've seen it in our league, you know, many of guys have had awesome careers, you know, without having to go to college, you know. So obviously as a, as a kid, you know, and, and me being a mentor to my, my guys is do what's best for you. You know, obviously I'm going to point them in the right direction and, and give them as much advice and answer any questions that they may have. And, uh, but my biggest thing is making sure that they get what they want out of playing for my program, you know, whether that's going to college, playing in the NBA, playing overseas, or going to school and just getting an education. Whatever it is, we try to push that and fulfill those agendas. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. Uh, first off, congrats for your client on practice. Thank you. For you, you know, Tommy said the phrase, you know, you tried to get to the start sprinting. What has the last month been for you guys to you know, get up to a good start and you know, not have to worry about getting yourself out of the hole? Yeah, I think it's it's important. You know, you always want to start off the year like that, you know, and making sure that everybody's locked in and and uh and then we're playing good basketball. We obviously want to be playing our best basketball at the beginning of the year, making sure getting off to a good start. But uh I think we've been building on that the last like the last year and then the last half year. You know, we've had ten guys since the beginning of last season, five of guys had it on on to this year. So it's it's still getting those new faces adjusted, and, and and that's what we utilize our summer for. A lot of guys were still here all the summer. I mean, I was here all summer. Um, you know, a lot of guys came back early. You know, we got a mini camp in in LA, so we we had some moments where we were able to come together as a team and and kind of build that camaraderie. You know, and, uh, I think getting Will, getting Monte, uh, two guys that played with West before, understanding what he wants and what he desires, I think will make the transition smooth for us as players and for a coach. Um, and then I think the ultimate thing is we have a lot of vets. I think that takes precedence over everything. You know, having the experienced guys who come in and playoff experienced guys, championship experienced guys, you know, who who know what it takes to get over the hump, you know, who know what it takes to to propel through tough battles, adversity throughout the season and, and prepare for the playoffs. So um, I think we've been building on that and I'm excited for for, for us to get going. You touched on it a little bit with uh, Will and Monte coming in, hoping West had streamlined the process for you guys getting you know, to know his defense and things like that. What are the couple areas where you guys need to make a big step defensively under the Russell system? No, it starts with his guards. You know, as, as guards, we put a lot of pressure on our big a lot of times for them to and gap, you know, to bail us out, you know, block shots. And, and granted, that's a blessing to have, you know, to have two run protectors now and KP and, and gap who, who can do that. But it starts with us guards. We got to be better on the ball, um, getting into the ball and make sure we guard our yard. And, and uh, and ultimately, it's, it's us as collectively as a team. We definitely got to take the challenge individually because our health defense has to be better. Everybody has to be has to be locked in, you know. And I think Wes does a great job of, of preaching, preaching that and teaching it. I think he's he's even broken it down until we get some good terms for us too, you know, and made it to where okay, we can we can do it, you know. And, and it's just a matter of us being locked in and buying into it. Brad, uh, you're here with Paul Trevor. So Kyle 
was in here talking about um, how important it is that defense is important to you and JP, the leaders on the team. I'm just wondering how you make sure that you're, you know, keeping defense a priority and communicating that to your teammates. Oh well, we have a. I mean, we we lead by committee. You know, it's an accountability amongst everybody here. You know, so it's a free reign. Kyle knows, and everybody knows in that team. If the next man isn't doing what he's supposed to do, or if he can be better, you know, we, we let that be known, and everybody so the comments and that. And we definitely start with me and KP. So that's been voiced, and we'll continue to do that. And Wes, Wes obviously has the ultimate voice, you know, so he's demanding that of everybody. So we, we all hold each other accountable. Hey, Brad. Um, Brad, over here. Okay. Uh, John Wall just recently uh, put out the piece in the player straight in about his story and just his fight and some of the things that he went through. He mentioned you. Uh, what did you think of that piece and just how did you feel about him telling his story? Uh, honestly, I haven't read the whole piece in its entirety. Uh, I do know about the story that is that he's uh, referencing. Uh, and I mean, that was, a, that was a tough time for him, for sure. Um, I'm definitely happy that I was blessed and the Lord saw favor me to be there for him, um, be there in this situation. Um, and just be there as a brother. You know, it's, it's I, I never, never wished that on anybody, you know, than me kind of having, I lost my grandmother last November, you know, so kind of seeing what he went through and then not even like a year and a half, you know, he went through it again, not a lot of people, you know, he lost his mom, lost his grandma, um, not having basketball, you know, that's, that's a lot for somebody to do, you know, who had the world in his hand, you know, who, he revolved his world around his mother, you know, that's the reason why he played the game as hard as he did, and that's taken from you, you know, so I mean, that's tough for anybody to really grasp and understand, so as a brother, all you can do is just be there to support him, you know, and, and lift him up and pray for him and, and just be there for him. Like, honestly, just be there for him. Sometimes, like he said it best, like, I didn't say anything. It was none of the time. It's just, it's just honestly being there, being there to hold him, being there to comfort him, whatever he needed. That's that's what I was there for, you know, and then to have that, experience that myself for a year and a half, almost two years later. It was like, I understand what that meant because I had my brothers, I had my family there, my support system too. So it's important, man. We need each other. You know, it's important you, you have your support system, your family, your friends, you know, your um, loved ones, whoever it is. You know, you, everybody needs somebody in this, in this life. For sure. So I'm, I'm blessed that I was an intelligent on my brother and continue to do so. Where are you now, especially after signing the contract? Do you feel like someone has something to prove since there is that stigma of getting big paycheck and money? No, that's not my mindset. That's, that's not my mindset, you know. Um, I come in it with, obviously, expectations of myself and of what the trade expects out of me and the organization as well. Um, but I'm the one, and my main focus is me. I'm trying to help this, this organization better than I am. That's my goal. That's my goal. That's my dream. You know, I'm showing up in school the best way. I'm showing up in the box. I'm showing up in the box. So, check almost every box. So, you know, I come in and feel in. So, that's, that's my final box. I'm going to check and go check. So, that's my main focus. That's my. That's what I want to do. I don't know you haven't gotten so much time. What have you learned about taking the game and how it messes with yours? He's dangerous. He's dangerous, man. I'm jealous. I'm not seven three. <laughs> you know, I'm a whole foot shorter. Uh, but it's it's I'm excited because he's he's a specimen. You know, he's he's probably the best big I'll play with in my career. Um, see his size, his versatility, ability to. Stretch the floor, spread the floor, and the ability to pass too. I think it's underrated, underrated. And his uh his defensive capabilities are underrated too. You know, so I think he he's another guy I think had another false merit at the bottom. And I think he'll he'll prove a lot of people wrong this year on the same Hi Brad. Um is, is somebody who's been guarded by Juan Wright before, uh, what does his addition mean to this team and this team? 
huge, huge in that in that category. His name, like he's a pest on defense. He can pick up, he picks you up ninety four feet, and he's annoying. So uh, it's great to be have that on your team and not have to face that. Uh, but just his, he's a true pro. You know, he comes in, does his job, runs his team. Uh, has a defense first mindset, but he also will, I won't say surprise you, but he has game on offense. You know, he'll be aggressive, he'll look for a shot, he'll get to the basket and finish, uh, create plays for his teammates. So, you know, I think he's a he's an underrated guard in the league for sure. And I think he'll, he'll definitely be in my team. Be battling for sure, but I think both of them have intangible tools, I think, for sure. especially as a fellow two guard. Johnny's, Johnny's. Johnny's special because Johnny has the build of a pro at, at his young age. Uh, he's a woman learner. Um, I love his jump shot, his, his ability to attack. But it'll be a learning experience for Johnny too. Um, and he has great vets and a lot of guys love him. You know, from me, Mike and Will, and Mike Cruz. Got a lot of guys you can learn from, KP. Um, and so having that and a lot of vets I think his his year his year would be a lot I won't say easier but it'd be a smoother transition for him. Um, so we won't be throwing that on the little John. We need you to do this for this year. It's, you know, we can easily gradually gradually learn what we need him to do. And uh, but when we throw him in the fire, he's always willing to accept that challenge. You know, that's how he's been in the last couple years. So I'm excited to see him. He's a winner, he's a learner, and uh, very flexible. So. Great question. Uh, coming back from surgery was a little process. I would say about four months, four or five months recovery. Um, you know, the first two and a half months is literally getting range of motion back. You know, uh, being in a cast for so long. Um, biggest thing is making sure that your joints can be free. Uh, the scar tissue breaks up and everything like that. And so that was the first portion of, of rehab, and then eventually working into the strength and mobility. And, Putting them all together, and, and pretty pretty much strong now. So I'm definitely blessed. And had a great great hand therapist in law. She was she was awesome out in LA. She's uh, one of the best hand therapists out there, and she's uh, helped me get back to where I am today. So I'm definitely I'm definitely happy. My guys here in DC, Mike Davis and everybody too. Our staff we got me back right. So I'm back on. Um, Brad, so you talked about dying. Uh, uh, the biggest thing, well, one, he had a, he just had a newborn, so he hasn't been around for a minute. So, congrats to him and his his, his lady. Uh, this is huge for sure. His, his life will be a whirlwind for sure. But that's but that's a part of it too. That's a part of the talks we have because I'm a dad, so I understand what that's like. But he's a younger dad than I was, so. Uh, it'll be a lot for him to balance being a rookie, um, handling that responsibility as a father and making sure that he's always available and, and getting that time too. Uh, but I'm always here for that, for sure. You know, I, I, I tell him all the time, you know, you have a lot of guys you can learn from. My biggest thing is for him to be aggressive. Don't shy away from anything. You know, I tell him every single time, you belong here for a reason. You drafted you for a reason. You got drafted here. It's here anyway. You got drafted for a reason. You know, so embrace that. Live in it, you know, know that you belong here, but also know that your work is just getting started. So I'm always here to help help guys out on the official OG at the same. So I'm always in there. Brad, um, you talked about uh, the LA Navy camp, and um, a lot of guys talked about how that made them better, whether it was mini camp or just working out with other guys. Corey specifically talked about how he worked out with players from other teams. For you this summer, who was somebody that you worked out with or spent time with and your whole perspective changed? Somebody in the league? Nobody. That's real. That's real. No, I'm being honest because usually I would, I would have a name, but I didn't, I didn't work out with anybody else. My wife was pregnant. So I was I was here in DC the whole summer. And this year she wanted to have a baby, so that was, that was our agreement. So we stayed here. I worked out here all summer. And on top of that, I really couldn't work out till late July, August, because of my wrist too. So, um, most part, I've been been in DC, so I didn't get a lot of that that LA action out there this year. 
Lamar Jackson in football is somebody who many people feel deserves the bag. You signed a deal yourself. Can you look at just the process of that pressure of getting that that deal? When you look at somebody like Lamar specifically, you want to know you watch football. What say you? Football is different than basketball. I'll say that. I'm just tough because I don't want to. I don't want to speak in other people's you know business or what they got going. Uh, but I, I respect what he's doing. You know, in football, you rarely will see guys play if they don't have a deal, right? If they don't have some type of security, uh, you know, on the back end. And I respect a lot of football players that have that that mindset, you know, because it's a business. And football is it's a little grindier than basketball. They'll cut you like a, like even mean nothing. So uh, I think understanding that business mindset of the player, I get. But Lamar just loves football. You know, you can tell you know, what type of player he is. And you can tell he really don't care about winning the deal, maybe, but he's out there playing, you know, so what are you really judging? You know, he's out there for his team, for his team, putting all the play, you know, playing a gruesome sport, physical sport, you know, so I salute him and everything he's doing. I hope he gets every single thing that, that he deserves and that he wants. So um, he's continuing to show out too, so. Brent, so you spoke about um, rehabbing and getting back physically 100%, which you said you are. What's been the process like mentally to get back to 100% to I'm that dude, I'm that guy? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. I haven't played since February, you know, so I had a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to sit and think and watch games, watch our team grow, watch our moves we make. And, and like you said, kind of get back to, okay, I'm that guy, you know? Um, and it is a process, you know, because you have to go through, you know, getting back healthy. And there's always a fear once you go under the knife of, can you get back to that, you know? And so that was obviously a, a mental thing that you have to push through and make sure that you're, you're locked in and you're confident and you're rehabbing and you're confident and knowing that you can, Get your hand back strong, do whatever happened with an operation and um, get those back in line. Um, and there's a there's a confidence standpoint of actually trusting your hands, trusting your body to do what you naturally do, um, not favor or shy away from it, endure that pain, endure some uh, stiffness that you may not be used to. Um, and ultimately, it's it's when you. I mean, you, I have so much time, and then you watch the finals, and you see so many guys have success, and you see the high level. And I personally got to watch Jason play in the finals this year. Like, that's, I was itching to get back on the field, you know? Um, and so that was, in me, that kind of brought me back down to life. Like, you know what? I am one of those guys. I'm going on the stage. I want to get to the stage. I want to be That's been my mindset the whole summer. So that's, that's a hell of a question, for sure. Lots of the Japanese fans are looking forward to see you in Japan next week. So, uh, so what will you show to the, like, the Japanese fan in the Japan game? And uh, also, what do you want to do in Japan? Oh, so I've been to Japan before, been to Tokyo before. Um, one of my favorite things to do, I, I watched a sumo wrestling match all day. And it was probably the most fun event I've ever been to. Um, so I would definitely love to do that. I've learned the ways of the samurai, uh, which was also cool. Uh, I would like to try a little bit more food. I'm a little bit more out of my shell now. I was a little bit more reserved a few years ago. So I'm a little bit more open to sushi options and stuff like that. So definitely want to explore that. Uh, and then ultimately playing in the game, like being in front of their fans, you know, giving them the show, giving them Something to be excited for, showing you know our love and you know what we do, and just put it on display for them because you know, they support us from afar. You know they look up to us as, as stars. You know so you know, I think we'll do our best. And, you know, just running around so we can all of our stories and things. Thank you. Um. So. You just talked about seeing Jason Tatum playing in the finals. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you babysat him when he was a kid, right? 
they're kind of sort of kind of similar. Yeah. yeah. So um, wh what did that mean for you to see someone who followed in your footsteps play in the NBA Finals? Um, I don't know, it's just real in a lot of ways. I mean, I always we talk about all the time. We talk about our relationship every year. Um, but you know, being really two guys from almost the same neighborhood. My mom taught his mom in his school and, and in volleyball. And being a little older than Jason, Jason making the decision to want to go to the same school I went to. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy to see. Um, and then see where he is now. He, he only dreamed of that stuff. We don't think that can happen. We're actually living it now. And so we embrace it. We definitely make sure we live in it and, and continue to strive to be the absolute best we can possibly be. You know, it's see his journey. I'm beyond proud. You know, he'll be one of the best to you know, pick up a basketball. So that's what we're doing. You know, the sky's the ultimate limit for him. He's not in top player in the league. You know, the NBC top is never So to see that. I would have never pictured it, imagine it. But I'm happy for him. I'm happy that it's happened for God. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brian, I know it's early, but what's some of the positives you've seen from this roster so far as you head into the season? Uh, I think just our versatility, you know, versatility at the wing position, uh, a lot of threes and fours. It's almost crazy. It's almost kind of similar to last year. Uh, so I know Weston's job will be. Carter, which is I'm glad I'm not the coach. But uh, we have a lot of versatility. We have a lot of guys that we can, we can plug in different spots, threes, fours, twos, fives, ones, different different looks, different uh, positions, lineups. And and I think we keep, keep a lot of teams on toes, keep a lot of teams on their toes. But uh, ultimately, I love our, our veteran presence. You know, we have a lot of guys who can come in, no, no terminology, no coach work. And we don't have the familiarity with the system. And so just come in and go. Hey, Brad, uh, as a leader and the back on the Wizard team and one of the best uh, scores uh, in, in the league, so how have you dealt with the, the amount of pressure and expectation on you? And have you ever feel frustrated uh, if those expectations are met? Uh, good question. Um, have I dealt with it? I feel like pressure happens. I mean, pressure is what you make it as an individual, you know? Your pressure of me or what you think I should feel as pressure is not what I feel as pressure. And that's kind of where us as players, well, at least that's where I've learned, right? And that's my mental state. And I've, I've learned to get to that place to where you set your mind to what you want things to be and not what other people's perception, what they want to put on you, pressure should be, not them, right? And, and I think that gets that message with a lot of guys. So for me, I just, I, I really focus and I understand that, yeah, I am I am in this position. I am the leader of the team. When I lose a draw, it'll be my fault. Sure. I'm okay with that. And I wanted to accept that. I'm confident in that. And I love you guys better than me. And than anybody in that team. I'm at that point now where I've always been there, right? And so um, it's accepting that. And to me, it doesn't bother me. It just doesn't, you know. This is this is a game I love to play. This is a game I have passion for, and this is my job, ultimately. And I'm doing the absolute best I can at my job, just like we all try to do on a daily basis, you know. And so, I give it my all. I know I, I put in the work, and I trust the work that I put into it, just like my teammates do as well. And so, every pressure we create is just nothing that, unless it's something we have as a goal. If we fall short of our goal, we just want to get frustrated. I'm a human being. There's gonna be frustration. I'm gonna be mad at myself. I'm gonna be you guys are there. But for the most part, you know, I mean, I understand it's gonna be pressure, but pressure is where we make it. You know, I'm one thing I'm worried about is that, um, you know, we only have like a basically four days, you know, four full days. So, you know, uh, that's the one thing. You know, if you go to Japan, I think you need at least like a week and a half, you know, to see like a bit more stuff. But still, you know, I think uh, we can go see you know, a couple of different stuff. And, you know, I'm setting up the dinner, actually, team dinner, too. So um, I think uh, the guys are going to love 
to be in another place in our paper, but like, you know, like the middle of the so, you know, I think they can see a lot of different stuff and different cultures. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think uh, other than that, you know, I think uh, we're going to have a little bit of free time. So, yeah, I can say just a couple of stuff and different stuff. So, you know. Great. So, you, you've been pretty vocal about mental health. Uh, during your career. Uh, and recently, former wizard John Wall came out with uh, just kind of talking about his struggle with mental health. Um, what do you what do you think that means to the league as a whole that, it, that he came out with? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's tough, you know. I mean, I've been here for almost now, it's going to be my fourth year. But, you know, I learned one thing is that, you know, the, 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 the schedule and the, the pressure that we have and, like, um, every day we play against the, you know, like top athletes, you know, that's the, it's really, it's no like normal thing to do, you know, that's why we, you know, that's why we're here, you know, we, we are special, you know, we are very special, but we still, you know, I think, I think everybody got to know that we're still human, you know, human beings, and um, we, sometimes I feel like people see us like, you know, a um, little bit, you know, different, like we, like in, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, um, um, we have to like know that you know we're still a human being and we gotta you know um, like focus like you know focus on uh, our like you know health like mental health and you know everything you know just uh, saying like that now people will start more like you know, talk about it and more comfortable to share and the story and stuff. So yeah, I think it's a good thing. Really for you, I guess how has it been you know having full off season here? What has your training routine been like and how do you think that's gonna help you Yeah, this is actually it was my first off season I had in my life, you know. Uh, I've been actually going off since I was a kid and um I think one thing uh, I want you guys to know that Japan, that we don't really have like an off season. You know, we if you play basketball, you play basketball all, all year long. Um, if you play baseball, you play baseball all year long. So it's a little different than here. So you know, for for me, just this was my first off season that I had, and like I can actually focus on myself and then and then work on myself. And I think that I did a pretty good uh, this off season. Um, with the, with the coach and how I was communicating with the team and uh, yeah, just like you know, um, I think it was a great season, a great, great off season for me and to go to the next season. Uh, Rui, I don't know if you got to spend any time with the other Rui, uh, Rui Machida on the Mystics, but obviously um, the Japanese Washington connection to the program. I was wondering if you got, if you got anything from her, her experience. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I actually like uh, saw her like a couple of times during I was here during the summer. Um, yeah, you know we are, we are supposed to have the same name, but you know, um, it's weird. It's just uh, it really is not like a very like common name. Like this, and, you know, it's like a very rare thing. So. But yeah, um, first I think uh, you know um, after like I heard like she wanted to be here, um, I was so happy about it because you know just uh. You know, the, the NBA, that way NBA is like, you know, one of the top leagues you know, in, the, in the world. And you know, both of the you know, Japanese, me and, me and her, you know, on the same stage, it's a, it's a big, really big honor thing. So, you know, I was so happy about it. Hi, really. <clears throat> um, last year, you obviously took a huge step as a three point shooter. How do you build off of that? What are you trying to add to your offense? Um, I feel like it's more about the confidence, you know. Um, I'm more confident shooting threes. Um, I've been working on it, you know, uh, this whole summer too. And yeah, I think it's gonna bring uh, uh, my game a lot more easier to like, you know, um, get to my spot spots like, you know, like you know, you guys know I like mid range those areas, so you know, I can have more like you know, those those uh, areas, you know, to pass to get into the spots and uh, make it easy shots. Um, but yeah, three points gonna, you know, also too, like, you know, that's gonna help me to get to my next part. Yeah. And uh, regarding the Japan trip, is there one thing that you want your teammates to try or experience while they're 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of things, but I I think uh, I don't know. I just want I just want them to walk in around the city because you know um, there's a lot of people in Japan and walking around. So, you know, one thing I when I went to Japan, like I always remember you know, people people really short. So, you know, like you know, like that's one thing. Like I think if you like walking around, like you can see like you know. Like the views are different out there for like it's all people. <laughs> um, that's the one thing I think I want them to experience. Yeah. I agree. Like shorter than me, that a lot of Japanese people are short. But anyhow, yeah, besides the three points, what is your current challenge and um, how do you are overcoming your challenge? Um, I think it's more about like the team chemistry stuff. You know, we have a, since like my first year, you know, we have a, Every, you know, every year we have a new guy and all that, so, you know, uh, adjusting the little bit, like, you know, all new guys, you know, that's the one thing for me uh, uh, this year is going to be a big step for me. Um, but, like, you know, it's almost a, it's, it's actually the first year, like, I actually had, like, off season and, like, um, we had, a, like, you know, actually, like, a team chemistry, like, we had, a, like, a mini camp, you know, right, like, a month ago. And those kind of stuff. I never done it. So like that was the first first time I did it. And like I thought that was good for for me and for the other team. You know, like you know, we need to do more of those kind of stuff in off season. But yeah, we've been, you know, connecting with uh, each other and those are things that uh, I wanted to do so you know, I think it's gonna help me and you know, the team. あと、ジャパニーズ、ポイント、ちょっと、ちょっと、日本の ま、課題みたいなのは考えられてるんですか<笑> ジャパンゲームを僕がドラフトされてからずっと話したことで、でもこういうコロナとかもあって全然できなかったので、今年やっとここまで来れて、ま、こう日本の皆さんの前でこのイベゲームできるということは僕にとっても嬉しいですし、
Um, I mean, either way, what is the, it depends on the team, what, what, the, what the team says, but, you know, um, of course, I've been doing, I've been here for like, you know, three years now, and my, you know, four is my, you know, position, so, you know, I think uh, that's more comfortable for me, but, you know, it, for me, right now, the game, this game style, right now, is like three and four is on the same game, so, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really, really matter for me. I kind of want to touch on the mental health thing again. So, do you, do you feel that team executives and team leaders are on the same page as players and just still want to see something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, that's like even now compared to now to like, you know, since I got drafted, you know, it's different now. Like, you know, we have a, there's a, um, there's like a mental health, like, you know, guy on the team. Like, I think every team has it now, you know, since after COVID, I think. Maybe team has to have it. One, one guy about like mental health and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think it's good that, you know, uh, we, we have somebody who can talk and, like, you know, um, even like in the before the game and stuff, you know, to focus on the game and stuff. Like, you know. So, yeah, I, no, I think, I think it's good. Like, you know, we still need to work on stuff, but, you know, I think it's, it's getting, you know, it's, it's becoming more open. You know. I transitioned um, to the city with amazing. Um, Great people, great restaurants. Um, just to you know, have a new scenery um, is been good for me. It's like a restart, uh, refreshment. So I'm excited to get things going. Um, like show my face, you know, the couple of events you know here is run by this new um, going to the inner city like how I'm gonna watch and then play the pickup games, you know, and donations. I'm giving donations to the rest of the team instead of just trying to get my face in the city. Same thing I was doing in Denver. Um, and just touch uh, different types of communities. So I'm looking forward to it and um, getting this train rolling. Uh, um, I've been to a lot of restaurants. It's hard to name, but uh, yeah, RPM Grill, the pasta. Um, I don't know their names, you know, like, all right, I look at my GPS. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's been kind of fun for me just, just to have them restart like I'm Ricky and then just I don't know where to go. I think just get my car and just drive. I gotta get that GPS to the game. Um just like meet new people, just run me, you guys, you know, it's new new faces, you know, new city. I'm very excited, but um transition been good, you know, the players, you know, took me in. Um, you know, it's easy to transition, you know, West being a head coach now, he had me in Denver before. Um, seeing me on the two way in my last day, just to see him in his new position and see me in my phase of my career is, is definitely crazy. And you know, Brad has done a great job. All the guys just you know telling me to you know, be at home and just play your game and just like pick up and just kind of making the transformation a lot easier than you know my best friend Kyle on the team. So that definitely helped. You were point guard ball off the court. Off the court. Um, for me, I mean, in Denver, I, I knew everybody's, you know, background as far as, you know, where they're from, um, you know, how many siblings they have and, and stuff like that. And I was big on me with being a leader. That's where the start for me, just knowing the ins and outs and how I can get to this player. Because I can't talk to Koo the same way I can talk to KP um, and get him going. So everywhere I, I played, I knew my teammates bigger than just basketball on the court. And I think that's why, you know, people kind of gravitate towards me um, to try to be that leader and that good person when you're off the court. So you know, it make guys feel more together, you know, as a fist instead of an open hand. I must say, um, what are your thoughts about DeLon Wright? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, DeLon can guard. Um, you know, he's he, uh, six five on our um, slender build like me, but um, he's got a lot of experience and play at his own pace. So, you know, having me and him in the backcourt for point guards, I think is 
is really, really good. It gives you two different dynamics, you know, guards, but guards that, you know, underrated in the, in the sense and, you know, ready to just um, keep proving that is wrong. How has it been uh, being here with two? I know you talked about them. Yeah. Yeah. You told us a great story about how you guys have been separated now. So, yeah. What's it been like? Uh, it's been good. Um, it's just crazy how everything just come full circle in life. Um, just where we started at, like I remember just like in second, third grade, spending night over each other's houses before AAU hey, turned and create create ourselves on NBA Live on the same on the same team. And then now we're skipping across from each other in the locker room. Like it gives me chills talking about because you know, I, I know it's a lot of kids all over the world doing that with their best friends now. And for us to do it and just show that it's possible and it can happen. Um yeah, that's that's all I want people to know. Like, you know, you can make it. Everybody can be success, successful if y'all keep staying on the right path. So that's like our biggest journey to go out there. Can't, can't wait to play alongside of them. And we're looking forward to, we wonder who's going to have the best person to stay for each other. So that's where I'm about to throw my hours or something. It'll be good. Have you had two points of emphasis for what you guys have been doing with Jalen and the expectations are for you this season, as well as the impact that you want to make, what would those three things be? Uh, me personally or not? For you personally. Uh, three, um, I would say just having, you know, having that smile on my face through adversity. Um, you know, I was always um, that person in Denver. People could look at me when stuff got tough. I don't like really showing bad body language. I try to keep keep composed like if we weren't in the room in the game try to keep the same energy throughout because as a point guard you basically a quarterback on the team if, if they see you panic you know, that, that it's you who will follow you know try to keep everybody humble and, and just and just moving in any situation we, we face this season and then secondly i would say also just being like a leader and trying to you know win games um i still like got that that chip on my shoulder from, you know, getting picked to be first in the draft. So, like, every night I go out, I just try to, you know, pull the daughters again. Like, I'm like the draft tomorrow, you know. So, I would say that and also just making sure we hold everybody accountable um, from top to bottom. I mean, I've been, luckily, I've been able to make the playoffs every year I've been in the league. So, um, just knowing how to get there as far as, just making sure everybody is held accountable. I don't care if it's from, you know, the, the top of the top to the last man, you know, on the roster. That's, that's where it has to start. And when we could do that and try to be 1% better than we were yesterday, I feel like this is the right direction where we want to take this thing here in DC. Good to see you again. I'm curious for you, Wes, to talk about you and Will be able to streamline some of the, you know, even for the implementations and things like that for those mm -hmm. the guys. What are some of the things that you might have already started to do to try and make sure that everybody's on the same page for what he wants to do defensively? I mean, communication. I mean, like the best defensive teams in the NBA, they talk every possession. You know, um, I feel like if you communicate, it trumps any confusion or you know, on your rotation. So we start with talking. You know, if I can be the back line of the defense, people in front of me should be able to hear me, and that should help them know what's coming. And, or what play they're getting into. So I would say by far is communication. And um, communication is going to help us fly around. You know, it's hard to guard these guys in his league because everybody's good. It's hard to guard, you know, five other people if you're not communicating. So, so we could do that and start there. We got the athletic ability. We got the guys that can do it. Um, we got a very athletic team, but it starts there and just knowing our scheme and this look at the pieces that this team has and what you know of the Wizards, what are you most excited about when you're in the roster? Um, just the depth, you know. I mean, I'm obviously the shortest guy on the roster, but you know, we got a big team, you know. So, um, you know, with that win, we can mix up a lot of lineups to be real, real big at times out there. Um, but honestly, I'm just like, like really – just excited to get out there and just show the world like they don't even got us like nowhere near up there in the east. And I mean, no disrespect, you know what I'm saying, to the east or to the west. But I feel like for what we got, 
you know, she's slapping the face when I even talk about it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on the side. If I was on another team and seen the roster, you got to count them in, you know. So um, I'm just excited for that, to be honest. You know, um, chip on our shoulder, chip on my shoulder, chip on everybody's shoulder. For y'all, should have a chip on y'all's shoulder, too. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, but that's how we got to rock this year, and that's how we got to, you know, make people notice us. But we ain't going to talk much about it. We just got to go out there and play. So that's really what I'm most excited about. Um, we all on the same page, and that's all you need. Hey, Monte, hey, uh, you know, when you come to a new city, it, it can be a different experience. But just talk about so far how maybe the fans have embraced you. I, I see the excitement from what have you done? Uh, I I noticed the same thing. Um, I try to like you know engage you know as much as possible with the you know the fans and try to get acclimated you know as much as possible and let them know playing for you guys. You know I'm gonna lay it out on the line. You know every time I step on the court and lace up. So I just think you know this is a big big town. You know and I think we well if we owe them just like a successful season. You know um, I know how much. Love it was just watching the playoffs, you know, when John was here and you know, all that like the energy was like unmatched in here. So, I mean, why not? Why can't we bring that energy back? That's the mindset, you know. I feel like the guys got the definitely mindset I got. So, we all can stay focused on one accord. You know, we owe this city, you know, DC, you know, successful season. And we all can stay healthy, um, you know, like it can be a good. Hey, Lance, um, I, I've seen, I've seen you at the Mystic game, the yeah. go-go tryout, like out and about. Um, just how has your acclimation been to D.C. so far? I really enjoy it so much. Um, to me, I definitely uh, just enjoy um, just having that that comfortability. To, I'm a big-time WNBA fan, but now having the Mystics there also um, is an easy transition for me. And, uh, my mom was a Hoover. Um, she coached at the highest level, so. Um, I always had much respect for women and, you know, what they do and how they play the game of basketball. Um, so me just nibbling there and then watching the go-go tryout, like, I don't ever forget where I came from. So I always go check out the talent and if I can give a, a hint or any little side note to a guy that I see the bench man, like, I'm going to do that. Um, it's just in my blood, you know, so. That's why I was like to go try out, you know, you never know. You never know how your story or your impact on somebody can be for five seconds, three seconds. Um, Cause I know how it feels if the NBA player came to watch me hoop and I was trying to get there. So um, yeah, that's why I went there. But as far as just like getting in the community, um, that's something I always did and hold myself accountable and pride on, you know, coming from the Flint, Michigan, a tough, tough spot. Um, to seeing how everywhere is different, you know, different, diverse everywhere. So if I can help people sometimes just want to gravitate to you and just, it's easy to put up a tweet and say, uh, I'm fighting for this, I'm doing this. I, I'm the type I'd rather go there and make them feel like they can touch you and actually hear you instead of doing it behind the app, you know? So that's what I kind of pride so much. I can tell you guys definitely appreciate that. And my last one for you. How does it feel just to be back with Coach West again? Uh, it feels good to be back with Coach West. Um, I'm just happy, just like, it really is just like a blessing, you know? Um, happy belated birthday to him too, by the way. He getting up there. <laughs> but just like West, like he gonna hold me to like a different type of standard, you know? Our relationship is more of a, just like a father, son, like, cause we grew in Denver as far as I can go in the West. West office and talk to him about life. It ain't got to be all about basketball. So he know at the end of the day how much I love the game and I know how much he want to win. So I feel like it's going to be an easy transition because he he has seen me behind the scenes putting in work for years. He So he know when I'm hungry and I'm, when I got that chip. So it's going to be so easy to just transition. And I'm excited because I just going to be able to show y'all, you know, because me and him got that, that chemistry. So I just like coaches that's going, he's not going to give me nothing. He's going to be on me. He expect me to take that step this year and also just like take that step to a point where 
the wing and offense, like he on me about it, you know, and I need that. I don't need that. It's all right, Monte. I, 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 don't, I don't need that. Wes gonna give me that. So I'm looking forward to it. So you spent your whole career at this point playing with back to back MVP Nikola Jokic. Uh, what lessons from that experience are you trying to bring to this team? Um, I mean, I mean, for me personally, um, I took a lot like from Nikola. Um, uh, besides just like him quiet and he don't be on social media and everything else, I I kind of took from like after games. I used to lift before games. Like I lift after games now with heavier loads. Just because of him and just like how quick he always say, like, you can't let Monday flow into Tuesday. You know, you can't let Tuesday continue all the way to Saturday because at the end of the day, you won't ever play that game on Monday night again. You know what I'm saying? At 24 hours, he's like, Monday at 12, game over with. We got to get ready for the next one. Um, I think that was like my biggest thing. I would beat myself up over 82 games, uh, 82 games, like, you can't be great every 82 like it's gonna be some adversity in there you gotta just push through and i think that's the message i'm gonna get guys like people always say like you can't control if you make the miss shot but you can control your effort you can control your energy every night and if i could do that and install that in the guys it's like effort you play hard we can prove that we can't control if we making the miss on monday but we can't let it roll into the next game and then uh, my last question. So from all your recent social media posts, it seems like you've been really excited to be here in DC yeah. playing for the Wizards. What are you most looking forward to this season? And just getting just getting wins. Like um like I've always like I don't think you understand. I always like been an underdog. Like I love that role. Like I cherish in that role just because like people like people keep overlooking us, you know, and I love it. So for me, it's just like ready to get the ball through up in the air, and it's like, oh, it's crazy. We love looking at them like, well, they got some talent over there. So that's what I'm looking forward to is just proving the doubters wrong. Um, DC woken it, woke up with me and the new guys. And um, yeah, that's just getting W. Yeah, that's, that's all I can try to do, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. Try to go well, uh, Will, I mean, Will Barton, that's the thrill. We call him thrill. You know, um, you can expect, you know, high flying. You know, he a vet, you know, so he, he, on, he know what a lot of teams are going to do. He can score the ball. We call him microwave because, like, he get going. He can, he can fill it up in bunches. So, like, even having him on the team, it definitely helped my transition. And he close to home in Baltimore. So, you know, he comfortable, um, and, you know, I'm trying to still get there. But as far as Will, he just going to bring that that dog with him, you know, that dog that you need. And he going to bring it every night, and he going to let y'all hear about it. <laughs> he talk on the court, so y'all going to hear him a lot. It feels good. I'm very excited. Um, my family won't be able to see me on a regular basis now. Um, it just makes me want to go out there and play real hard for them and uh, just to make them proud. It's always a uh, dream of mine to, uh, you know, one day in my career to play for the Wizards. Just for that reason, so I can be able to play close to home. Never knew it, it would really happen. Never knew when I wanted it to happen, but just at some point for it to happen. And, uh, good to see you. Great job, Wayne. How you doing? Good. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess for people that's not from Baltimore, it's just been a buzz back then. And you're yeah, here. Yeah. Just talk about what it means to that community, you knowing that they can just come down and go to see. Uh, I know it means a lot. Uh, I'm getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages, social media about, you know, the city's going to be, you know, coming down and support. And uh, I really look forward to it. And I just want to embrace it and, you know, relish the moment. Like I said, go out there and just get big time efforts. Night in, night out, just to make them proud and you know, give them something to look forward to. And now that you're back reunited with Coach West, um, just how does that feel? You know, your game, but what you're looking forward to the back of that? It feels good, man. I was, you know, proud of West, even when he left us, him to get an opportunity to be a head coach. I know how hard he worked for it, I know how, you know, how bad he wanted it. So when he first even got this job, we 
he stayed in touch with uh a lot. And I just want to always let him know how you know happy I was for him. And now I'm gonna be, you know, here and you know, be side by side with him to help, you know, try to, you know, turn the thing around, you know, same way we did in Denver. You know, I look forward to that. I will. Um, this may be a better question for you three weeks from now, but how many ticket requests do you have? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I ain't not gonna tell people, listen, man. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to come see the show, you gotta buy a ticket. Just like you know, you would go to see your favorite artist or uh, or your favorite show. I cannot give out all these tickets, man. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna put a hole in my pocket. <laughs> oh, so you were recently uh, profiled in Slam Magazine. You had a you had a feature. How does that feel to be kind of featured in the pages of one of basketball's biggest culture publications? It felt good, um, you know, especially for me when it growing up. I don't know how it is now for for the youth, but you know, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, you know, slam was like the Bible. For being slam, it was like you know, you you really made it. I remember uh, in high school when I finally, you know, I got a slam article, being one of the top, you know, players in the country. I was on, you know, I was on cloud ten, man, not nine, cloud ten. I was I was so happy. So when they wanted to do another piece on me this time. I was just as excited, you know, just to, um, you know, be in that magazine and be featured, and you know, it's always good to have your hard work and knowledge. Uh, we talked to our coach on cell the other day. He said the starting three spot is wide open. Um, just what are your thoughts on that? As someone who's probably on the short list of candidates for that role. Um, my job is about being compete. Um, iron burst competition. That's how I was raised. Um, ever since I, you know, picked up a basketball, that's all I've been doing. Nothing's ever been given to me. Um, I work for everything I've gotten, and I'm no stranger to going out there competing for a spot, for a position, or a job. So it's nothing new to me. And uh, another, you know, part of the journey that I embrace, you know, I competed for spots and starting roles in Denver. So you know, it's not like I'm walking into uncharted, you know, waters and anything like that. I look forward to it. Hey, well, it's me again. Um, you were at the event over the summer at the DC Middle School, you know, getting into the community. Obviously, Brad is somebody who similarly has, you know, done a lot here. I guess have you guys been able to yet pick each other's brain about what you guys need to do together going forward? Oh, um, not yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure um, as time goes, we'll, uh, you know, we'll collaborate you know, figure out a way that we can do some things together. Like you said, he's already done a, you know, a great job. And, you know, the more time I spend here, the more I want to, you know, leave my mark and, you know, do some of those things. So I'm looking forward to it. And defensively, I'm curious, during practices, are you already, you know, taking any roles or, you know, communicate more? Okay, this is what coaching from our coach always said, you know, Sometimes it's easier coming from you know a fellow player than what the coaches might say. How do you try to you know, streamline things for other players? Uh, it's it's so early right now. We've only you know had summer workouts and you know pick up runs, so it's not too much of that right now. I, you know I talk to a couple guys here and there, but like you know before training camp starts tomorrow, it's just been you know fun getting those guys trying to build the early chemistry and get some. Uh, some job going on, but as the season goes, as training camp starts, um, I'll definitely be one of those guys, one of those voices that you know that'll you know, try to embody what Coach West wants to bring to the uh, culture and the defense of the team. Hey, well, um, so now obviously you get to play with Brad. How do you think that's going to enhance what you do offensively? Uh, it's going to enhance what I do offensively a lot. Um, just to have another wing threat out there that. You know, it's very similar to me. I can score in a bunch of ways, um, can make plays for guys, you know, off the bounce, can get to the rim, shoots for three. Um, I think he had a career year in assists last year. So um, there's a lot of similarities. So anytime you get to play with a, a attacking guard like that, that can do a lot of things. It can only make your game better. I'm one. Take uh, you know, he, he's a classy point guard, man. He's like a throwback point guard. I always tell people. Um, he goes out there, he competes hard. Um, he's not turning the ball over. Um, he has a great mid-range game. And he, he just plays to win. Uh, 
anyone in town you guys play with Monte, they enjoy playing with him. He likes to get others involved. And like I said, he's just a guy that goes out there and, and, and tries to make one of the plays. How was your offense? Um, our offense was good. Um, we can kind of go through a rundown. I had an event in my hometown, um, finally, that I got a chance to do. Um, that turned out good. I got a jersey retired down there in my high school. This was a long time coming. Um, very happy for that. Very grateful for that. Um, and after that, we had an alumni conference. I played down there with a couple of guys that was former um, Wildcats and stuff, like myself. One that I don't, that was like the first part of my summer. I got my newlywed. I got married in June 8th. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the wife is if you're watching this. I made sure I told them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so got married, had, you know, family trip, got me and her family out. We really enjoyed ourselves, had a good time, had a honeymoon in Cabo, went out to LA to train a lot. I did pretty much a lot this summer. You know, we didn't sit down too much, we didn't be too lazy. My wife don't like when I be lazy, so I had to move around. <laughs> yeah. That's a great summer. Congrats on all that. Yeah, um, thank you. What do you think about the additions that were made to this roster this offseason? Oh, I mean, I'm grateful, you know, just basically picking up where we left off from last year, you know, it was, you know, Decent season last year. It didn't go as we expected. A lot of stuff that happened throughout the season and stuff. And, you know, we got new pieces to the team. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. I'm ready for it. You know, Will, Monte, Devon, Taj. We got a lot of guys that came from, you know, the winning program. Taj has been in the league for a long time. So, he has a lot of experience. Can't wait to really just, you know, really just soak up as much wisdom from him as I can. I'm pretty sure. You know, so like I said, I, I just can't wait for it. You know, the sky's the limit. You're looking to be <clears throat> playing in the postseason for sure this year. So, um, really just ready for the first game. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Wes told us or Tommy that Todd kind of told you when you set a screen, you know, set it with some impact on mm -hmm. I guess what did that already in such a short amount of time learning process been like from, you know, a vet like him? Oh, I mean, it's good because, I mean, that's something that I would say that I mean, for sure. There's somebody just coming out of nowhere, you know, giving me advice, you know, something that I see is something that's genuine. It's like he sees that, you know, it's something that I can do and something that I need to work on, obviously. He's been in the league for a long time, so, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to retaliate to what he says at all. You know, like I said, I'm going to soak it up like this one because I want to be in a position to where, you know, he's in the same, in the same position he's in. You know, being in the league for a long time. So I want to be able to, you know, find the nicks and crannies that it takes to do that. So learning from a guy like him, he says, I mean, set a screen on. I'm going to go set that screen hard. Now, yes, you just more maybe a couple aspects of your game that you really tried to work on and improve this summer. Really just to use, you know, being a little more versatile in the offensive end, trying to shoot a little bit more, attack the basket a little bit more, if I ever have the ball in certain situations, little things like that. Not trying to be, you know, Superman or anything. Just trying to, you know, add a little bit more to my game to where I can be more of a threat and have more of a crazier impact on the offense than you know, what I want to do. I know, again. Good to see you again. Good. Nice to see you too. Um, did, did, were, was there anything that you added to your game or maybe watch film and be like, I can maybe bring this to the table this year? Um, really just like piggybacking off of the last question, really just um, jump shot for sure. Really just getting out of my comfort zone, you know, there was times where I did take jumpers last year and I've gotten to the position to where like, I'm just going to start taking them because I feel a lot more comfortable where I am now and with the team that I'm with, you know, it'll be a lot more space on the floor where I can actually do that, you know, getting, making opportunities to get baskets for myself and making opportunities to get baskets for the team, you know. What was a positive that you saw in your game last year that you looked at Frank found on in this season? Really just the energy and the work ethic, you know, running the floor, being a dynamic roller, being on the rim 24-7, and really just protecting home, you know, and just basically trying to work on being a defensive anchor whenever I'm on the floor. Those are the things that I've been focusing on all the time. Do you feel more like settled in now? I know you said all those things happened this summer. Do you feel like now you're finally like settled in and you're ready to Take, it, take that feeling on the court? Yeah, because this is like the most normal summer we've had in two years, basically, ever since COVID hit. So just really just getting all that stuff out the way during the summertime, 
it really helped me kind of like wind down and just really just come back to myself and get more comfortable with myself, like on the floor and off the floor. It helped me a lot mentally too. So really just kind of like getting back to just like the normal things around the world is something that helped me a lot too because I mean, when COVID hit, it was, it was tough. You know, we were day in, day out. We didn't know what we were going to be able to do. <laughs> if we were going to be in a lockdown, if we were going to be free, you know, it just, it just felt weird. So now that we're kind of like heading back to, you know, the normal scene, you know, it's it's a bit more different for me now because I feel a lot more comfortable with myself. And what about your place in the locker room? Obviously, you mentioned all the vets that came in, but I kind of feel like you're becoming a leader on the team throughout the year. Like, how do you feel about your place so far? I mean, I, I feel it's coming. You know, we got a lot of guys who've been in the league for a long time, so you know, I don't really just step out of line too much because I ain't got that many under my belt. You know, these guys are kind of like double, basically my years in the league, so. When it comes to the time where I have to speak, like, you know, I'll, I'll say something. But other than that, you know, I let the guys lead the team. They lead by example. I follow the lead most of the time. Whenever it comes to me, just having to say something is mostly about defense and what we can do better on defensively. But other than that, it's all good. I am. I really am. Um, we're going to be out there for my birthday. On October first, so I really can't wait for it. You know, I know we're going to be um, doing a lot of stuff on that day, but I'm kind of I'm gonna try to sneak off sooner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, all in all, I just really can't wait to you know be in another culture, you know, out there in the world because you know being in the American culture, you, you learn about you know, America and so on and so forth. But it's always good to really just learn what's going on around America too. You know, so being able to kind of like learn about that culture and whatnot, those are something that's something that I've been wanting to do since I was a kid because my dad, you know, he was somewhat intertwined with it. You know, he used to have his talk to me, you know, a little more talk to you. His dad always gives him and whatnot. But I kind of paid attention to just some of the things that he said about like, you know, all the countries around the world. And Tokyo was one of them, you know, so I can't wait for it, you know, because of all the conversations that I've had with my pops and dad. Must have for long flights. Um, a neck pillow, of course. Um, and if I'm not sleeping, I take my Nintendo Switch with me all the time. And I have a variety of games on that. And nine times out of ten, if anybody's walking past me on the plane, if y'all are on the same plane as us, I'm gonna be playing. <laughs> you know, most of the time when I'm on a plane, I rarely sleep unless like I'm really, really tired. So other than that, I'm up either on my phone or I'm like you put the neck pillow with like the whole front and the whole. I do a little bit of both, you know. I, I kind of like mix it up, you know, because like if I want to lay back, you know, I put it back there and like relax. And if I want to lay forward, you know, if I'm like leaning forward or anything, I do there. It's like a little headrest, you know. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I am not. I'm most definitely going to try to sleep half of that at least. If I can't, then I'm probably going to be messing with somebody on the plane. Ain't no joke. <laughs> First impression. He reminds me a lot of um point guard that I played with in high school. He goes by the name of Zar Perry. He's trying to get overseas and stuff now himself. Um, but he is a leading point guard, knows how to lead the offense and make plays happen, basically. And when it comes to me and him, we build chemistry the first time he played pickup, you know. So my thoughts on him, you know, definite point guard, knows his role and knows how to lead the offense. Too. Uh -huh. I've been here about a week now. Um, I like the city. I'm uh, inter interested in learning more about the city and just, you know, interacting with the fans and everybody that's from here. And I know we've asked you about reuniting with Kyle, but now that it's actually a thing, what's it, what's it been like? Oh, it's been fun. Uh, he's been um, kind of helping me um, speed up the process, getting to know people and Learning the city. Um, I was just at a talk yesterday. Watch was that yesterday watching the game? Oh, was yesterday? Yeah, Thursday football. Yeah. So uh, we we've been hanging out and all uh, just you know just trying to get acclimated with the team and you know all those cool things. He says he remembers watching you when he was a freshman at UConn. As he said, it's only playing six or seven minutes a game. What what were your impressions of him then and seeing where he's grown to now? If that, I don't know if he put that many minutes. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, it's crazy though. Cause he she tried to play the same way in college. 
uh, shooting fadeaway, you know, you know, playing like Katie and coach wasn't letting that ride. So um, to see him actually able to play that way and expand the game is, has been crazy to watch. Um, even his, you know, fashion brand, you know, all the things he's doing, I wish I would have did that, you know, coming into the NBA and uh, branding myself that way. So, you know, I've learned a lot of things from that aspect from him. Your 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 defense obviously is a big selling point. Just how would you describe the, the impact you hope to make on this team defense? Um, yeah. So if people watched me last year, um, the playing game and some of the playoff games I played with Atlanta last year, um, they really relied on me to pick up the tempo on defense, picking up the point guard, just changing the game defensively. So I see me continue to continue to do that. Um. Just trying to make it tough on point guards or whatever position I have to guard. So uh, that's definitely how I see myself playing and um, setting that tone defensively when I'm in the game. You know, I'm welcome to UP. Um, Brad was sharing. Didn't seem like you were too happy about it, but you know, you're picking up 94 feet in practice. I guess, how do you see 